उपशम प्रकरण द क्वीज चैप्टर फाइव द स्टोरी ऑफ गाधी अजूर ब्लू स्काय नॉट इवन ए क्लाउडलेट टू मिलाइन इट्स प्योरिटी इट्स लाइक एन इन्फिनेट डोम ओवर द इक्वली मेजेस्टिक हिमालय विच आर एस्पायरिंग टू टच इट द क्लियर वाइट वाइट पीक्स रिजल्ट ऑफ ग्लेशियशंस of snow over millions of years stand as a bridge between the earth and the heaven the peaks have been acting as the benign sentinels and as the uninvolved witnesses to the history of mankind they have discouraged innumerable in- invaders helped genuine travelers with a thirst for knowledge smiled benignly at those adventurers who were prepared to risk their lives to stand on their peaks not only with an intention of the conquering the peaks but maybe to borrow the vision of the peak though only for a short time or given shelter to many a seeker plunging into another kind of adventure with an aspiration to achieve the non involved witnesshood the sky and these magnificent mountains have infinite secrets that are beyond man's comprehension having an humble beginning at a lonely cave in the himalayas she starts a long journey towards the ocean at the source she is just a trickle gathering strength very gradually flowing through broad gorges falling into great depths imbibing the fragrance from the himalayan herbs earth and wild flowers her sister meets her downstream and they strengthen each other till their combination becomes a gusty torrent this phenomenon gets repeated at many other places rudra prayag karna prayag dev prayag and prayag of alahabad at ganga sagar she merges with the ocean if one sees her humble beginning in that trickle inside the almost unapproachable cave one can never imagine that she affects so many and has become a cradle for such a wonderful culture as ours one may even have misgivings about her benevolence after experiencing her violent upheavals doomsday floods and cruel droughts something similar happens with another phenomenon called mind while the river the flow of water is at least predictable the mind the flow of thoughts is not this is necessarily so because the water is governed by the physical laws as it is gross it can move only in one direction towards the ocean while the thought has the freedom to move both ways towards the world of objects as well as its own source even the movement of water depends on the terrain thinking on the other hand has the freedom which is truly mind boggling and this very freedom can become a gate as well as a wall for a person using the freedom to find out the source of thought and experience it freedom becomes a gate for liberation while a person misusing the freedom to involve and indulge with the sense objects desire for power or control over others and other facets of ahankara the very freedom becomes an impregnable wall of a high security prison there is another similarity between mind and the river from another point of view the ganga at gomukh is already one with the ocean because the source and the merging place are the points at two extremities of the same river similarly the individual mind is already a part of the cosmic mind and has the power of that universal mind at its disposal that is why each and every enlightened person declared directly or indirectly 
that every being is already united with the reality. Only in his ignorance does he think otherwise. This ignorance has been called as Maya. Maya, Ya Ma Sa Maya. Itself means that which is not, which is only apparent. And sadhana consists of shattering the nightmare of multiplicity and remembering or waking up to the oneness of existence. There is an interesting story of a rich sheikh in search of wisdom. He came to know that there are wise men in his sheikhdom who can share their wisdom with him. Out of all such wise men, there was one Sufi mystic living in a small town who was really extraordinary. But he refused to come to the court in spite of many attempts by the officials. The people told them that the only sincere persons could meet him and that too under a tree where he presently stayed. It is said that the sheikh took the best diamonds and precious stones in a velvet pack to exchange them with the wisdom. Reaching the town, he searched for the fakir. Finally, the sheikh saw a very ordinary looking man in torn clothes and hungry looks. But accompanying man confirmed that this was the man. Hesitantly, the sheikh asked the man as to where he could find happiness. Suddenly, the fakir grabbed the bag containing the precious gems and started running with the panicky sheikh at his heels. But the fakir knew all the lanes and by lanes of the town and was soon lost in the maze. Dejected and tired, the sheikh retraced his steps to the tree where he had initially found the fakir and to his surprise found the old man in the same spot with a smile. When he approached the tree, the fakir returned the unopened bag and the sheikh was extremely happy. Looking at the beaming face of the rich man, the fakir asked what had made him so happy. The sheikh answered honestly that the lost bag of gems had made him unhappy and now it was back with him. He was happy. The Sufi mystic commented that he had come to him with a question on the whereabouts of happiness. His snatching the jewel bag and running was the answer. The happiness is all the time with every one of us, but we apparently lose it in our forgetfulness. We imagine it is lost or stolen in the maze of our involvement and indulgence. There are various examples given in Vedanta like the Dashamo Nastaha, the lost tenth man. Ten men on their journey were crossing a small stream. On reaching the other bank, they wanted to ascertain that they were all safe. But when each one of them counted, they could find only nine and the tenth man was lost. A wayfarer saw their plight and made them aware that while each of them had counted his companions, he had forgotten to include himself in the counting. Or the person searching for the ornament which is around his own neck all the time. Bringing out this purport of the above story, as and when a seeker starts treading the path she or he has chosen for himself, there are times when the mind starts asking about the nature of maya, the ignorance or forgetfulness. In spite of the fact that a seeker comes across many explanations of maya in different scriptures, she or he does not get a clear picture of the same unless it becomes a part of her or his own understanding. The present story of one such seeker who was interested in gaining the first-hand experience. Of course, it is not mandatory that every seeker should have such experience, but there is nothing like should and must or mandatory on the mental and spiritual plane. But this is also true 
that invariably there comes a time when a seeker recognizes this veil of ignorance and sage vasishta continued saying that the greatest obstacle on the path of this world bewitching maya which is the prime cause of the cycle of repeated births and deaths this can be destroyed only through mastery over mind to illustrate this he started telling rama the story of gadhi in the country of koshala there lived a brahmin named gadhi for reason best known to himself he abandoned his family and retreated into a forest for intense tapas consisting of standing in deep water for long hours lord vishnu manifested before him gadhi was extremely happy and came out of water and fell prostrate on the bank of the river he worshiped and praised the lord thus identifying himself with those very qualities when the lord offered a boon gadhi sought to know the true nature of maya vishnu acceded to the request and said the brahmin would have the experience in due course a few days later he remembered the boon of lord vishnu on way to the ta- to a tank filled with lotuses dipping his head in water he forgot to chant the vedic mantras as was his habit and he found himself dead in his own village amidst his relatives his wife mother and all others were weeping bitterly over his death his lifeless body was consigned to the flames and was reduced to ashes thus gadhi saw himself dead and burned while he was in the water of the tank thus getting himself involved in illusory visions that were imagined by him the life of gadhi being over he found himself reincarnating in the womb of a low caste woman of dark complexion with great difficulty she brought him up with all love and care he too grew up into manhood with body dark as charcoal by name of katanja he was strong and had none to equal him in his valor he married a girl of the same caste and lived happily with children born out of this union as time elapsed dotage and grayness set upon him constructing a house of leaves at a distance he started living as a tapaswin the children too advanced in age and became old death seized them all except katanja being tired of incessant loneliness experienced in solitude the survivor's mind became confused he was sick with desire and began to wander in different lands at last he reached a country called kira the king of the country had died without leaving any heir to the throne the people had decked the state elephant elephant with precious gems and let it loose to go its ways and select the king the tusker in search of a person to rule found a nicha the low caste as akin to its own color and raised him up on his trunk with his long trunk the subjects were overjoyed and the newly selected king was taken to the palace in grand position the old courtiers and the commander in chief began to obey his orders the new king assumed the name of gavala befitting his position and power he reigned over the land attended and loved by all one day after 8 years gavala removed his ornaments and started roaming on the street outside the palace without any regality appearing as a true nicha a group of outcasts were moving towards him playing a playing upon their veena the stringed instrument the oldest of the group recognizing the present king of kira approached him in true love and addressed him with affection in his old familiar name katanja 
his dearest relative and inquired about his whereabouts and his presence in this distant land feeling ashamed with the familiarity shown by his past relative he refused to recognize him and retreated to the palace the ladies of the inner palace however had witnessed the scene which had passed between their king and the low caste men surprised they informed the minister unable to find any way out of the situation they were stunned and perplexed but gavala acted as if nothing had happened and the ladies the courtiers and others started avoiding him as if he was a corpse then the subjects held a solemn conclave and came to a conclusion that they all were contaminated by the association of this nietzsche that no amount of penance could purify them and that the only course open to them was to was mass immolation in fire with this resolution they fell into a large pyre as the moths entering the fire the king too became afflicted in heart by the sect blaming himself for the death of his courtiers and the subjects he too entered the fire while the body of katanja was being burned the body of gadhi which had taken a plunge into the water of the tank began to palpitate and quiver in four ghatikas covered by the veil of mal maya ruminating on the experience he rose from the water and sitting on the bank he meditated upon the troubled jeevas running about in the world with agitated minds and was temporarily relieved at heart with some doubt still lingering he spent some days in the deep thought a guest arrived in his hermitage he was looked after by gadhi in the best possible way on performing their daily devotions during the sandhya after the sunset they engaged themselves in narrating atma jnana stories to each other muni gadhi noticing the extreme emaciation of the body of the guest inquired into its cause the guest replied that at the request of his relatives he spent a month in the famous and wealthy country of kira while he was staying there he came across a person who related the following anecdote a king ruled that country wisely for 8 years but his true identity of being a nietzsche was brought to light with the discovery all the subjects coming in his contact entered fire and the king to followed hearing this the guest fled from that country and went to prayag in order to absolve the sins by taking a dip in the confluence of three rivers and also performed chandrayana vrata there chandrayana vrata is an observation observance beginning with 15 morsels of food on the full moon day a person reduces them one by one till he reaches the new moon day when he when when he increases it by one by one daily at these words of the guest muni gadhi was surprised at the way in which the stranger had narrated his own history to verify the truth of the events of his imaginary life as nietzsche he traveled to the country of hunas and saw his birthplace and other places he had dwelt it was exactly as he had seen in the trance under the water he proceeded further north to the kira country and saw all those things related to his life as king gavala he heard the events of his life told by people there then he reached the slopes of a great hill to become a great tapaswin after the elapse of an year lord vishnu again appearing before him observed that gadhi had seen the glory of maya and asked him the reason for performing the tapas at the hill side gadhi the tapaswin after paying due respects to the lord expressed a doubt 
as to how his mental experience of delusion could manifest itself as real to which the dark blue cloud colored lord vishnu replied that this earth and other things in the universe have their substratum in the mind and cannot exist apart from it almost all persons in the world in this universe of dreams delusion and egoism look upon it as real and enjoy or suffer it the universe rests only in the chitta and one need not be surprised if the chitta containing this whole universe objectifies the life of nietzsche which is only an infinitesimal part of the universe the ekagrata or single pointedness of mind of gadhi got reflected in the life of a nietzsche woman in some inexplicable way giving birth to a child in the huna country which in turn followed its own course as katanja gavala and his emulation in fire after his subjects coincidentally the guest too became a part of this illusion and came to the hermitage and narrated the story of gavala like kakataliya yoga or the analogy of a crow and palm fruits the ideation of nietzsche's life reflected itself in the minds of all living in the huna and kira countries this is how the ideation got more and more strengthened assuming apparent reality the lord continued that the ignorant get impressed by the idea of differentiation like he you i this that mine etc will continue to sink into the mire of pain but those who have cognized earth and other things of the universe as not different from the i will never grieve those with a mind free from desires and firm buddhi or the clarified intellect never give any importance to desires but since gadi was not yet free from this progeny of differentiation the desires he had got swept off his feet at the time of experience and forgot himself vishnu told gadhi that in the wheel of delusion mind is the axle the maya does not affect such a person who has quieted the mind through viveka the lord blessed him saying that he will acquire true jnana after performing tapas or penance for 10 years in the cave of the hill gadhi thus freeing himself of all delusion through the advice and the grace of the lord attained the state of jivan mukti on performing tapas for 10 years absolving himself of all attachment like all electrical appliances deriving power from the same source mind of all beings are connected to the cosmic mind that is why there is an undercurrent of unity and agreement amidst all diversity for a man who is being aware of only the diverse forms and behavior it is very difficult to even appreciate the thought of unity shri ram krishna used to give the example of the dolls and the shapes made out of sugar candy for a child they are all different but for an adult it's very plain that only their external forms are different while they all have the same taste of sugar drawing power as the individual minds do from the common source it is not surprising that once in a while some minds get linked and vibrate alike to have the same thoughts and feelings two people find themselves thinking the very same thought simultaneously though one may succeed in voicing it before the other moreover most of us share many experiences as is common in the world of objects of course our impressions and interpretations are definitely according to our own innate nature a startling statement is made by don juan to carlos castaneda when he returns to normal consciousness after an experience of a state of parallel reality castaneda describes the place and events 
that have been experienced and wonders whether they were only a part of his imagination or have any element of truth in them don yuan assures him that whatever is experienced in any state of mind is true and continues in that plane of existence and that the science or logic cannot explain it as there are many things which are unexplainable he adds that the events and the things and people seen in dreams continue even after waking up and that most of us lack the power to go back into that very world yoga vasishta makes an attempt to offer explanations through symbolic stories in the story of lavana at the end of utpatti prakarana and in this present story the author materializes the psychological or inner experiences in both the cases men under the influence of maya discover that their experiences are not only psychological but real even at the physical level their individual minds are connected to one cosmic mind although the bodies are different and through some inexplicable reason two or more minds get connected and are able to feel and experience the feelings and experience of one another explaining this experience to gadhi lord vishnu uses the word pratibimba or reflection hinting that though separated by large distances the thoughts and feelings are caught by the mind indicating that each mind is a receiver as well as a reflector another very important statement made by the lord is that gadhi was swept off his feet when he was not aware indicated by his failure to chant the vedic mantras the story tries to convince the seeker of the illusive power of maya surprisingly this power is initiated and nurtured by the individual mind itself while the cosmic mind is one the individual mind connected to it differs at the superficial level governed by the likes and dislikes when exaggerated desire becomes a mania while the repulsion becomes phobia it is a common experience that each mind perceives the world and interprets it according to its own level and starts projecting its own mental modifications on to the world it is like the colored vision of a person wearing colored glasses and yet there are many things which are beyond normal logical explanation once d h lawrence the famous british novelist was strolling in a lush green garden a child came and tugged his coat uh, coat tail and asked a strange question uncle why is it that the trees are green lawrence paused for a moment looked around at the trees and looked at those innocent blue eyes of the child and said because my dear the trees are green just as your eyes are blue and that satisfied the child material things though bound by the physical laws are many times inexplicable as and when we enter subtler planes of existence explanation becomes more and more difficult maya the cause of manifestation of existence including ahankara is the subtlest and necessarily transcends all logical exp- explanation one can only see through it and transcend it up to man the evolution is logical as it follows certain physical rules and pattern but the evolution as it is understood by us and as explained by our biologists stops with human being because man is endowed with the power of thought which gives him superiority over all other species and to a very great extent control over the external nature but life means to move progressively ahead 
till one gets more fulfilled than one is in the previous state and man's fulfillment lies in the change of plane altogether from the physical to the spiritual it's a quantum leap from the known into the unknown a man under the influence of a dream never realizes that it is a dream whether it is a pleasant dream or a nightmare he is influenced by it the only course open to him is to wake up into an entirely different state of consciousness and when he does there is only a relief and a smile on his face because he realizes that the entire universe in his dream or the nightmare was his own creation when he when one wakes up to a transcendental consciousness which contains all the three states of wakeful dream and deep sleep states one cannot help smiling at one's wrong identifications and subsequent tears and laughter the ganga is already one with her lord sagara the ocean even as she hesitatingly trickles down in the cave of gomuk but the ex- excitement of the journey through the sylvan himalayan slopes the adventure of jumping into deep gorges the pleasure of communicating with the flora and the fauna the fun and frolic of disturbing the landscape through floods the satisfaction of appeasing the thirsty and the peace of inspiring many a seeker is the privilege of mother ganga and others like her the infinite azure blue sky remains untouched by the presence of threatening thunder clouds the cirrus clouds try to beautify the sky by their fleeciness but the sky remains undisturbed by them knowing its own self similarly a seeker tries to drop his identification with the clouds of ahankara and the subsequent delusion and experiences the union with reality and the beauty is that she or he is already one with it it's only a mistaken notion of helplessness which has been appropriately called as maya and even the maya has its role in initiating the seeker's own experiences of scenes and acts he has to play in the drama of existence